This is one of the most popular trail bikes on the market. But the question we always get asked, should I get a Siskiyou T7 or should I get a Siskiyou T8? Well, after riding these bikes for over a year, we're gonna be going deep, looking at the geometry of the bike, the spec, checking out these two new awesome colors, and then we're gonna get some special guests to really push these bikes to their limit and let you know just how capable they are. So to begin with, what's new? Alongside with the blue-green T7 and the purple-black rainbow T8, there are now two new colors. First off, there's the shark gray and silver T7, and my personal favorite, the gunmetal gray and copper bronze T8. Great looks aside, let's discuss the similarities between the T7 and the T8. So first off, we have the frame and geometry, which really sets the T7 apart from other bikes at this price point, which are often a few years behind the curve. Starting off, you get size-specific wheel sizing. So the 27.5 inch wheels are available in the small and medium, and the 29 inch wheels are available in that medium as well, along with the large and extra large. But the real standout really is that geometry. So you get a slack head angle, steep seat angle, nice roomy reach, and you get nice short chain stays as well. At 185 centimeters, so six foot one, the size large fits me perfectly, and that has a 480 millimeter reach. In terms of travel, they change slightly between wheel sizes too. So the 29 inch bikes come with 135 millimeters of rear travel and 140 up front, and the 27.5 inch bikes have 140 in the rear and 150 up front. But don't look too much into the differences in travel between the 27.5 inch bikes and the 29. The extra diameter in the 29 inch wheels makes up that little bit of difference in terms of travel. But we'll talk a little bit more about the geometry of the bike, the suspension, as well as the wheel sizes when we dig a bit more into the ride review. So where do the bikes differ? And that mainly comes down to the spec, in particular the suspension as well as the drivetrain. So starting with the suspension, on the T7 you're getting RockShox stuff. So in the rear you've got the RockShox Deluxe Select Plus and then up front, you've got that RockShox Recon. The T8 on the other hand comes with Fox suspension. So in the rear, you're getting that Fox DPS shock, and then up front, you're getting a Fox 34 rhythm. But in practical terms, how different are they really? Well, in terms of the rear shock, I'd say they perform pretty evenly, but the main benefit going up to that T8 is definitely the fork. The Fox 34 is just that little bit stiffer thanks to those thicker stanchions, so the 34 millimeters on the Fox compared to the 32 on the RockShox Recon. The Fox also has that little bit more adjustment and the damp is just a little bit more sophisticated and controlled when the trails get rough. And another perk is that you can also add volume spaces to the fork too. But in saying that, the rear shock on both these bikes, you can adjust with volume spaces as well. So in terms of drivetrains, the effective range is the same. So they're both coming with 12-speed Shimano drivetrains. So you get in that ultra-wide 10 to 51 tooth cassette. So that's gonna give you plenty of range going up the climbs. But the main difference is the T7 comes with a Dior drivetrain and the T8 comes with an SLX drivetrain. So in terms of shifting, they're both gonna perform pretty similar, but where you're gonna really notice the difference is the SLX stuff on the T8 is just that little bit lighter. And the last small difference between the bikes is the brakes. So both bikes come with Tetra Orion brakes, and they've both got four piston brakes up front, but where they differ is the T7 only has two piston brakes in the rear, while the T8 has that four piston brake in the rear as well. So the rear brakes are just gonna be that little bit stronger on the T8, but really most of your stopping power is gonna come from that front brake. So again, I wouldn't look too deeply into this as well. So other than that, both bikes share the same tubeless ready rims and Schwalbe 2.6 inch hand stamped tires. And both these bikes come pre-taped from factory. So all you're gonna need to do is add a valve and sealant to set them up tubeless. On both bikes, you get that nice long dropper post and they've both got the same finishing kit as well. So you get some nice 780 millimeter wide bars, short stem and some nice grips too. So that's all the nerdy stuff out of the way. How'd the bike ride? So I rode the T8 for over a year and in between my time on the T8, I rode the T7 every now and then to really gauge the differences between the two bikes. And because both bikes share the same geometry, travel and a lot of the same spec, the only real differences I noticed between the bike really was that fork. So I've ridden the RockShox Recon a fair bit on the T7, but also on the D7 as well. So I've ridden this fork a fair bit and on the XE and trail stuff, it really excels. But if you're a rider that's progressing your skills and you're starting to hit some gnarly stuff at a bit of pace, that's where you're gonna really notice the improvements that the Fox 34 offers on the T8. So as I said earlier, it's just gonna be that little bit more stiffer. It's gonna be a bit more controlled when the trails get rough and it's just gonna keep up with a lot of those repetitive hits a bit better than the Recon. And then as I mentioned earlier, the ability to add volume spaces as well is very welcome. But what a lot of our customers do, they get the T7, so save a little bit of money there. Then down the road as they progress, they just upgrade the fork with the money that they save. Differences aside, the Siskiyou T is often dubbed by us as our do-it-all trail bike. So what you'll notice on the climbs, that super steep steed angle will put you in a really efficient position on the climbs. And then the pedaling platform's really good on the bike too. It doesn't bob too much, it keeps pretty stable. And then if you want it to be a little bit more firm, 
you can always put that lockout on too. And that's a great option on those more prolonged fire road climbs. And while on the climbs I do have the odd pedal strike because the bottom bracket is pretty low, it's an absolute blessing on the descents. And in combination with the short chain stays, this thing absolutely rails corners and it's really easy to manual as well, but you get a real feeling of being in the bike instead of on top of it, which a lot of other 29ers have. But what really blew me away was how capable the bike is on the descents, making it a really versatile option if you're looking for that do-it-all trail bike. Geometry has really come a long way in the past five years or so, and it's great to see such awesome geometry at this price point. So for me, for a trail bike that really doesn't shy away from the descents, the 65.5 degree head angle really is that Goldilocks zone and mixed with that 480 millimeter reach you've got plenty of room to move around on the bike so this gives you a lot more confidence on the bike and there's also a lot more stability too so with those short chain stays as I mentioned earlier the 135 millimeters of travel which is pretty progressive the bike's still really poppy so the bike's not too long that it takes away from the fun factor you can actually pop around throw it around and have a bit of fun but it's stable when you want it to be too so it really is a good mix and i have noticed on a lot of trail bikes these days they've gone a little bit too far so they're a little bit too slack and a little bit too long that they kind of detract from the fun factor of what a trail bike really is meant to be i think the Siskiyou t finds a really good balance point between what older bikes used to be so really nimble and agile but they weren't necessarily the best on the descents and these super long crazy bikes that aren't too much fun so it really is that goalie lock zone that I like. So in talking a little bit more about the suspension, setting up the suspension on the T7 was a breeze. Just set it up 30% sag in the rear, 20 to 25 up front, and you're good to go. So on the T8, I spent a little bit more time on it, so I was really able to dial in the setup. At 85 kilos, I ran a 0.8 spacer in the rear shock with 30% sag. And then up front with around 25% sag, I was running four volume spacers. And for me, this setup was absolutely dialed. But as always, I recommend everyone to try out different things and see which setup you come up with because everyone's terrain isn't the same. But that's enough from me. Let's hear what some of the pros in the Polygon team have to say about the T8 after riding it for the past year. Uh, this is honestly my first time on a Cisco. It handled everything amazingly. Anthony, how do you feel? Yeah, it's great. This bike uh, is actually stock setup. I have one at home that I've been absolutely beating on for two years and it handles everything. Uh, honestly, surprised that it's held up with the abuse that I put it through. So it was fun to ride here. Uh, cool to check out Sydney on the T. Hey, my name is Amy Morrison. I'm here with my Polygon Siskiyou T8. This bike is a smaller travel bike for me personally as I race enduro and have a 170 bike for that. Got on it for the first time, felt super comfortable on it. It rides really well. I actually built this bike up the night before we filmed my Polygon release video. And so I had never rode the bike or a polygon bike before and we had the video already scheduled so the first time I rode it was for that video and I got on it and the video came out great I felt great and it's just a super fun bike um, great for for all terrain and just getting into riding and pushing yourself so there you go there's our thoughts on the polygon Siskiyou t7 and t8 if you have any questions about the bikes definitely leave a comment below and if you want to check out the bikes check out the links in the description there as well and as always thanks for watching see ya